meeting for February. We have had an executive session tonight and we've already done our roll call. To start our meeting, we're going to ask our city councilman, Sean Wilson, to lead us in a uh, legislative prayer, that's what it's called, and then would you remain standing and we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. place our hands to in your son Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sean. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> Most of you know I keep track of these odd little things because uh, I intend to write a book one of these days. But tonight, I just said the Pledge of Allegiance for 993rd time since I've been mayor. I'm really hoping, I think I'm going to make it, that I will reach 1,000. Don't you think? I will, I will make it because we have several months left. Well, we're thrilled to have everybody here tonight. We do have some special guests with us tonight. We're going to honor those people here in just a moment. Uh, before I do that, however, I wanted to honor Mr. Wallace, who is up there in the video nest. Uh, this past week, we all attended the leadership banquet in uh, Waynesville, St. Robert, for the Chamber of Commerce, and I had nominated Mr. Wallace for Educator of the Year, and they chose him, and we were so excited uh, that Tim got that honor, and I said in my little uh, description of him, what a great job he does with those students, and all of the opportunities that he gives you guys. Uh, to make you really get ready for a career maybe in this. So Tim, our congratulations, we're very proud of you. And tonight on our crew we have Peyton, we have Josh, Logan, Colby, and Brad. And as usual kids, we thank you so much for uh, what you do. Um, first thing on our agenda is always our consent agenda, and I would entertain a motion to approve okay. that. Motion by Mike France. Sean is a second, and all those in favor, would you raise your hand? It's unanimous. Okay. And we paid our bills and approved our minutes. And then uh, always the fun part for me is uh, being able to honor people. And just before I uh, introduce you to some dear friends of mine, uh, Laura and Cornell Miles, uh, I would like to say that I also uh, attended the ARC in a couple of weeks ago. I attended the ARC and was able to give a special recognition to a group called the Fun Club. And the Fun Club offers alternative activities uh, for people with differing abilities in our community, many of them adults. So they've graduated from school. Uh, this gives them an opportunity to uh, socialize and, and learn different things. And so let me see if I can say all their names. Allie Hillman, Adrienne Falke, Kim Furr, Katie Bilner, and I'm missing one and I'm in trouble. But there, were five, there are five people who established this club. I'll think of her name here in a moment. Uh, and, I'm, and I was excited to recognize them. And then, as I have done over the last year, as I'm saying goodbye to the mayor's seat, I have been recognizing good citizens of the community. So I have not been accepting nominations. You know, these are people that either I have not recognized or people that I just really want to thank for all they've done uh, to really to make me a better mayor and to make the city a better place to live. But about a month ago, I get this really nice letter from a neighbor on Baloo Street. And they nominated, asked me if I was taking nominations and that they felt like Cornell and Laura Miles deserved a Good Citizen Award. And I got to thinking about it, 
What better example of what neighbors are in our community? Uh, neighbors who step up and help when they're needed, uh, offer things when they're needed, and y'all gonna make me cry? <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe I've cried any, but I will tell you that I've known these people for nearly 50 years. <laughs> Had all their children in school, Vic, Melva, I'm missing one, Cornell Jr. Cornell Jr., how did I miss that? So anyway, these guys, and they, they were my neighbors for a long time too. I lived uh, on a street over. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is honor these wonderful people and uh, I'll introduce you to the community. Would you guys come up please? Let's see if I can quit crying. <coughs> I'm just a big old baby. I'm a big old baby. Come on over here. <laughs> but everybody always kind of moves it over because they don't want to be in the picture. And I have it. Do I have it? Oh, did you bring yours? You forgot, didn't you? Well, guess what? I, I, I have one. I knew you'd okay. have one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really basically said, I said uh, to honor your support of your community, your giving spirit, and your tireless efforts. And, it, and to the examples that you give other people. And one thing I forgot, Cornell's retired military. Yes. In fact, Miss Laura went over and over. She was so upset that I said her name first. Right. Why are you I saying my name right. first? It should Always be Cornell's right. name. And I said, well, you're the lady and you're gonna be first. <laughs> but I'm so proud of being your friend. We're proud of your service. And we're proud of everything that you do for our community. Laura, uh, many of you would recognize Laura. She worked at the all three bank. banks. Several. Oh, all three. Uh, of course, I knew you was at the Boatman, bank. Boatman's Fort Leonard Wood, and then moved over to something else, and then I went to First uh -huh. State in St. Roberts and finished up at Bank of Iberia. Okay, and I knew you. Where you took my picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew her, of course, through the I Bank, and then I'll tell you another place I knew her. When I first became a councilwoman and we began working on the downtown revitalization project, Miss Laura jumped in our committee, David, downtown. She jumped on the committee and became part of the downtown beautification committee. And one of our real big achievements was that we got that clock put on the square. And Laura took part in that. And then what great parents you've been. So my congratulations to you. Uh, I can't honor you enough. You want to know about my kids? <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it very much, and, Mayor. And let's do some pictures here, and then I'm going to let you talk a bit. Uh oh. I would want to run over this. All right. Hold that little thing up there. Thank you. Did you put the flash on? Yeah, it's on. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. I don't ever have it on. Uh, you guys can say a word if you'd like. Oh, and, and yes, he was. Uh, what? Cornell was Veteran of the Year and was Marshal of the Veterans Parade. Right. So if you have something to say to the community, we would love to hear from you. This is home from the coal miner's daughter from Pennsylvania <laughs> to Waynesville, Missouri. This is home. 24 years military oh. with my husband. The Lord willing, 16th of Sorry, 15th of July, we will have 60 years of marriage. Don't know why. Go ahead. Oh, wow. When uh, I decided to make Waynesville my home, I didn't have a, I had no clue that I was where I was going to retire until my kids decided they were going to spend their ways times away from home and one was going to join the army and the other two was going to go off to college and I said, wow, this is not going to be right unless those kids, when they get out someplace, say, hey, how's your dad doing? I said, I don't have a clue. Last time I saw him, he was over young. <laughs> and ever since I've been here, I've really enjoyed it. And the biggest thing that I recall doing since we're being honored for this is that you recall the big ice storm that we had? You bet. Oh, nine. Yes, exactly. Well, I went out and bought two chainsaws and the wrong pole saw, and the first place, the first uh, residence that I hit, or that me and five other guys hit, was Mrs. Conley's home, and where they had all of their trees just falling all over the place. Wow. And then from there on, we had 
several other residents that we built and cleaned up. And I also, after retirement, I was a Waynesville uh, Police Department dispatcher. Then I went to Pulaski County 911. I was on my way to uh, becoming a, de a reserve deputy until I said, no, I did not spend 24 years in the Army to come out here and get shot by something. <laughs> Uh, but everything I have done, I really enjoy doing. It's a pleasure when uh, you give so much when that you find people that really do their uh, above and beyond, like you, Mayor, to recognize those who do a lot. Thank you very much. Very good. Appreciate we appreciate it. it. She wants to say one more thing, but can I say one more thing? He looks like he's like 50. Do you not age? Do you know? Do you, are you I mean, you got gray hair. No, I'm not kidding you. Don't you think? He's as handsome as ever. Okay, I'm through. <laughs> For my husband, I think to me the most memorable thing he'd done here in Waynesville was the Missing in America project, with going out researching and finding the military remains that had not been claimed oh. and put <coughs> nice. correctly put away and take care of that. So he started that here in Winsville. Very good. And believe it or not, that's still going on. Yes. It yes. is still going on. I actually that's remember that achievement. because there were unclaimed <coughs> remains at our, at exactly. our funeral home. Exactly. Several. And they didn't know what to do with them. There was exactly 22. Wow. And out of that 22, there were 12 families that was actually still here and when they found out what was going on, wow. and that they did not have to pay out of their pocket to go down to the funeral home and them, I would like to claim my, re my loved one's remains wow. and do it and get it like that. Wow. And you know, I forgot, I have a, a city coin uh, to give to Cornell for his military service. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate and I have, what about me? <laughs> I, for Laura, I have a key to the city. But now it's real little, okay. and it doesn't open anything. <laughs> but you know what? That was going to look great on your lapel. Yes, yes. Love you. Love you again. Thank you, Mayor. I, w I will not forget that, and you know what? Be sure to invite me to your anniversary. Okay. Do you, do you know what the legacy riders do? Yes. The legacy mm -hmm. run? Yes, I do. Don't let it be. Yeah. Okay, okay. he wants to talk about the Legacy Riders. How many know about the Legacy Run? Well, I guess that's me. And that's, it, it, it is outstanding that the Legion Riders started mm -hmm. this back in the whole, I think, 19, 1982 out of Indianapolis, Indiana. They go out and they go to every American Legion, the different areas, they might be south, they might be north, they might be west, they might be east. And they notify all of the legions that are within the route that they plan over a year ahead in advance. Then that, those legions, they go out and collect donations for everything that they possibly can, even if it's just a dollar, it's gonna help. Now what do they do with all these thousands and over, I think, a million now. What did they do with all that money? The one and only purpose is that if a veteran should die at the time of war, they have a spouse that is being left with one, two, three, sometimes as high as four kids. That wife, that spouse, I don't care who she is or how much she has in the bank, is not going to have enough money to put all those kids through college if they want to go through it. So, if that happens, the veteran dies at the time of war, if those kids decide they want to join, they want to go to college, they no longer have to worry. If mom can't handle it, contact an American Legion veteran, wow. and we at that time will put them in touch with the legacy people, and they will put those kids through college as long as they hold up above the average. Very good. You can't beat that with a stick. Super. Thank you. Cornell reminds me maybe of me sometime when, when I sit in the house for so long and I want to talk. Right? I want to talk to, it used to be when I had just kids, I want to talk to an adult. 
So we, we appreciate you sharing that, Cornell. That's a wonderful story. And of course, I've dealt with them and worked with them many times. And appreciate you guys. And then, David, would my friend David come up? <laughs> Here, I've got the real thing. Guys, I'd like to introduce to you guys David Hassett. And David. I'm going to hold you to it. Okay. Uh, David is our business spotlight, Bill, out of, your, out of your committee. And come on up here with me, by the way. And David owns Lost in the Woods Antiques. Now, I don't like that name very much, but it has stuck. And we all love you. And what a great store you run. Uh, I was reading some of the, when I announced it, I was reading some of the comments that people made. And you are just very much appreciated and admired. So Lost in the Woods is downtown Waynesville. He opened his store, he and his wife, Jane, opened the store in 2012. This establishment is owned by them. They are a military family. And again, after years of service to this country, they chose to make Waynesville their home and much like Miles. Lost in the Woods showcases uptown, get it, uptown vintage pieces in a down-home atmosphere. I like that a lot. They're well known across the region for their ability to make you feel like family as they offer a level of customer care that is very rare in these days. You go into Lost in the Woods, you've got coffee, he'll give you candy, <laughs> and he'll talk to you. Cornell, he'll talk to you. Okay, so we are thrilled uh, to honor Lost in the Woods. One of his customers uh, nominated him. And again, I'll say to the public that we do take nominations. And so if there's a store in Waynesville, a business in Waynesville, that you would like to honor, all you need to, I'm losing my voice. All you need to do is get a hold of uh, Miriam here at City Hall or our Facebook page, just write her a note. So congratulations to you, David. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Please tell Jane that too. I will. Okay. If you go in there, he will sell you something. Awesome. And he'll sell you something. I've bought many things from him. They usually involve records and the Cardinals. True. Got it. Thank you. You, know, you, you want to say anything, Dave? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, come back. We got to look. We got to look at this girl. Huggy day. Thank you. Now you can see. All right. Now, Dave, anything you want to say to the I just want to say thank Facebook you. audience? Facebook. Uh, say thank you to everybody that supported us. Uh, we just started our ninth year, which is kind of unheard of for especially first-time business owners. So just thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. So many years ago. Yes, it was. There you go. Thank you. Thank you all. That was wonderful. Miriam, could I have my phone so that I can look up the other lady's name that I forgot to say because I'm going to get in trouble if I don't do that. So congratulations again to all of you. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do for the city. And... We have our board and commission reports. And the first one, as always, is Lawrence Beamer. And he is the chairman of the park board. And I believe in the audience tonight is a member. And that is Amanda Corn. So Lawrence, if you'll come up, remind the uh, council that if you're gonna talk, be sure to flip your uh, I'm going to introduce a guest that came to this park board and let her talk uh, as a citizen comment. Yeah, I have uh, these to pass out. Miss Bonnie Wilson uh, will uh, talk about what she took to the uh, park board. It does not just about the parks. It's about the city. It's about the state. It's about everything. So please listen to her. She's going to bring it down a little bit from what she did at the park. Board. He said I took too much time. <laughs> so I'm going to make it. He said that? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, and, and Bonnie's a teacher too, so yeah. watch out. Okay. Yeah. He's already told you that my name is Bonnie Wilson. I'm a retired science teacher and counselor from the Lansville District. I also work as a seasonal, uh, seasonal park naturalist in state parks in Arkansas, Missouri. 
Since I retired, I've spent a lot of time volunteering for the Missouri Park Department of Conservation, teaching kids to fish, and also in the outdoor classroom. Outdoor classroom, or it's called Nature Unleashed, with my granddaughter who teaches DFL at, at Wood. It's so, called Nature what? Nature Unleashed. Very good. And uh, we've known my granddaughter, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've done a lot, and I'm also uh, on the stream team. I'm a Classic County Master, master Gardener. I'm in training for uh, Missouri Master of Naturalist. And I would like to add to this list volunteering for the park here in Langston, because the park is really dear to my heart. I love it. What I'm here today to talk to you about is a, is a threat to the park, especially the trees. And if you look at the packet I gave you, uh, I won't go through this page by page, but I would like to introduce this invasive plant. It's called Winter Creeper. It's on the Missouri invasive, well, it's called Noxious Weed List in Missouri, and it's also on the federal invasive species list. It came to the United States in 1907 from China as an ornamental ground cover. It is still sold at Menards, Lowe's, and Walmart yet, and it is, uh, they're trying to get that outlawed, but right now it's still there. So if you ever see it, for sale, and it's sold by a scientific name. Don't buy it. <laughs> uh, you can skip over to page three. On page three, I'm going to read this to you because it's, it tells you all you really need to know about the plant. Can I interrupt? Yes. Mr. Wallace, can you pick up her volume? Okay, very good. I was worried. Go ahead. Okay. According to rankings by the USDA's Forest Service Local Exotic Pest Plant Council, that's a lot of words, and the Virginia Department of Conservation, as of 2009, winter creeper may be the most invasive exotic plant impacting the southern regions of the United States, especially Kentucky, Tennessee, and Missouri. It's in our park. Winter creeper grows in two ways. It grows vertically and can climb up to 70 feet on trees and buildings. Winter creeper also grows in a thick mat on the ground and can reach a depth of three feet. Winter creeper forms flowers and fruit only when it's climbing. It can spread rapidly from the thousands of seeds that drop to the ground, and it's capable of rooting as it runs across the ground because everywhere it touches it will root. Winter creeper attacks in two areas, main ways. Uh, the biggest threat to the forest is its ability to climb up to the crown of a mature tree and overtop it. When winter creeper overtops the canopy of the tree, it blocks the sun from the tree leaves, slows down the tree's ability to do photosynthesis. This weakens the tree and makes it more susceptible to disease, insect, and flooding. If the trees in the park are weakened in this way and killed by winter creeper, it will destroy the natural barrier that the tree roots provide and help cut down on erosion during flooding. And this is a major problem in our park. Winter creeper also grows very rapidly and takes over everything it's cast. It forms a thick, thick mat on the ground and smothers other plants and steals nutrients and moisture from the soil. Uh, it can complete it. Winter creeper outcompletes all native plants. Judy Faulkner from the Virginia Public Park System says it best. Where winter creeper lives, native plants die. Trees do not thrive. Without native plants and trees, our local insects <coughs> and other animals can't find food and shelter they need to survive. I've actually seen this picture, Bonnie, on your second page up there in the right hand corner. I've seen that in the park. Oh, yeah. That ground cover. We always oh, say, oh, look at the ground cover. Oh, yeah. No oh, ground cover. We don't want that. Well, I wanted to make sure I identified it correctly, so I got a hold of a uh, uh, representative from uh, Missouri Department of Conservation and also, and he met me in the park, and he brought with him a forester from the uh, Markway National Forest. Uh, real quick, they were supposed to walk the whole trail with me, which I walk that trail all the time. Uh, they got there, and they get out of the big F-154 truck, and they're like in their 30s, and they're like these you know, really robust young men with legs longer than my whole body. I couldn't get them to walk more than 10 minutes and they done. But they did do this. They did affirm that I had identified correctly. It is winter creeper. So now, if, now we're going to take a walk through the park. If you turn on page four, this is a picture from the park that I took this February. And this is at the going up toward the spring. If you look at the right hand side of that picture, that is winter creeper on all those trees. Wow. If you look at the left-hand side, that is another invasive species called Japanese honeysuckle. So, my dog and I walk this trail all the time. And the last time I walked it, I counted the trees just along the trail that had winter creeper growing in them. And there are 159 trees, 12 inches in diameter or bigger, wow. that have this in them. That's just along the trail. If you, if, you look, if you look toward the creek, 
it goes from that trail all the way to the creek. It's just a lot. So turn the page. So we're just going to go through all these pictures we're taking the park. That's an example of a tree being overtopped by winter creeper, and you can see the dead branches at the top. Uh, the next page is also a tree that's being overtopped by winter creeper. Wow. See more damage to the tree. The next one on page seven, they're all, the pages are all numbered at the top right hand side of the corner. Page seven, that is another tree that's being overtopped by winter creeper, and you can see the branches, the big branches at the top are dying and falling. There's 159 trees, they're not all in that bad of shape, but there's 159 trees just along the trail that are impacted by that. If you look on page eight, this is an old ash tree that <coughs> stands by the road close to the parking area by the handicapped fishing spot. And you can see how big that tree is if you compare it to that truck. And this shows you how winter creeper grows on the trunk of the tree, and then the vines go up to the top. This tree is dying. The forester that, this is as far as we've lost, but he did say that that tree is dying. He says he thinks it's dying from an emerald ash borer, which is an insect. Yes, and we're aware of that. Yeah, but that tree might have gotten, been more susceptible to the emerald ash borer because the winter creeper was on it. <coughs> Turn the page. This is the same. This is a picture of the same tree. And if you look, it's kind of hard to tell. But if you look right here, that's the stem of the winter creeper, and this is six inches in diameter. This winter creeper has been in this tree for years. And turn the page again, and the next page is this big old ash tree, and I'm standing at the trunk looking up, and it's really hard to see any any bark. That's all winter creeper on this tree. This tree is being strangled by that this. real thick thing. Is your yes? Oh my! If you if you look like right in here, you can see the bark. All of this is winter creeper, even this, and this is probably like four inches in diameter. This branch, this wow. winter creeper stem right there. Okay, moving on. Okay, that's all examples of overtopping of trees. And the next way it can impact an area is by forming a mat. So if you look on page 11, this is a picture of a uh, winter creeper mat on Forest Floor in New Angel City Park. Mm -hmm. And this actually is in the ruby section of the park. And if you look at the ruler, it's nine inches thick already. It can get up to three feet or three feet thick. Uh, even an acorn falling on that can't root because it can't find the ground. And if you look at the next page, that is another example of it as a mat on the ground, and nothing can grow there, not even ground. So, and this picture is in the ruby section of the park too, on the on the park side of the playground. And turn the page. This is not Wayne City Park. Now, 40 years ago, when I explored the park with my kids, this is what it looked like. Yeah, I yeah. remember it. It's beautiful. I actually even looked up on our online. I looked up the. Uh, Ralph Laughlin Park and the Riverview Park. It's not Ralph Laughlin, by the way. Ralph Laughlin was our teacher. Oh, what is it? He's our teacher friend. It's Roy. It's Roy Laughlin. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. Ralph was our, Ralph was our principal. That's Ripper. probably yeah. why I said that. Yeah. Anyway, I apologize. Uh, the spring sign, <laughs> uh, it, uh, lost my train of thought. Oh, Sorry. when I explored the park with my kids, that's what it looked like. Yeah. And now, if you can say, this is what it looks like when I explored the park with my great grandkids. That's what's left. And this is right above the bridge on the Ruby or the spring side. If you look, that winter creeper goes all the way to the spring. It is a major, major problem. Okay, now, uh, turn the page. What do you do about it? <laughs> this is a picture of a gentleman using a cut stem method to control this, and this is actually not a winter creeper who's cutting that oriental village street, but it's the same process. And what you do is you cut the stem, and the bottom part of that that goes into the ground, you have to paint the top of that when it's freshly cut with an herbicide. Then it kills it at the root, and then the top part dies because it can't get water or nutrients. And then it falls from the tree. The next two pages are an article that I found about a park in Kentucky that's set up a lot like ours, and it, but it runs along the Kentucky River, and ours runs along the Ruby Creek. This is a group of volunteers that they put together that actually attack this problem. And I would like to see a group of volunteers put together here to attack the problem also because it's amazing what a bunch of like-minded people can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Because this is real labor intensive. Uh, if you look on page 18 and 19, this is some information on how to control the uh, winter creeper. And if you look on the fourth paragraph down there, I think I put, I've either highlighted it or put an X by it. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that the way to control what's climbing the trees is to do the cut stem method. 
You have to be really careful, though, what kind of herbicide you use because the creek is right there. And I don't know enough about herbicides to tell you what to use, but I'm sure your fish biologist can help you right. or anybody else can help you with that. And then if you look on the, the next page, on page 19, it shows you, I think it's the fifth paragraph down, for the low patches that are on the ground, you can cut it, the patch to the ground early in the growing season with a mower or a weed eater or a machete or any other tool. And then it says you can spray that, but once again, I don't know enough about the spray to tell you what to use there. If you do that enough, that will die. That's why it's not in the soccer field, because it's mowed there. I was walking across the soccer field the other day, and there was a little bitty piece of it, and I yanked it out. Because the mowing gets rid of it. Yes, if you do it consistently. It might take two years, mm -hmm. but if you keep it mowed down, weeded it down, it will kill it. So there's a way to kill this, and it's not, it wouldn't be really expensive, it's just labor intensive, uh -huh. uh, and then you have to figure out what kind of herbicide you use. The very last page, is uh, this is a information sheet on the Missouri Invasive Plant Task Force, and I talked to Nathan Mentis, who's the coordinator of this program, and he was very, very helpful. He said he would help us in any way that he could, and his phone number is there. Also at the bottom of the page, there's some more places where you can get information about how to help fix this, and then my phone number is there too if you'd like to have that. Wow. Um, I really, really am worried that when I, when my great grand, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is really important to me. But what I'm really worried that when my great grand my great great grandkids are pushing me through the park in my wheelchair or I'm chasing them on my motorized wheelchair, that all they'll see is winter creeper. The trees will be gone and I'll just be a mad winter creeper wow. crawling around looking for something to crawl up. So that's wow. what I have to say. And also, Ms. Luge, I would like to thank you for your service for eight years to town has my little career. You're welcome. You have You've done some research here, girlfriend. Yes, ma'am, I have. I, I have contacted the Missouri Park Conservation. I've co contacted National Park, uh, Marshall National Forest. I've contacted the Department of Agriculture in Jefferson City. Uh, who else? And then Nate Mentor from this program. Here. Well, I, I obviously didn't know what I was looking at yes, when I called it ground cover. Yes. Uh, when you started talking, I said, is this even worth, worse than kudzu? It is. Because we have kudzu, and it's a horrible thing. It's compared to kudzu. Okay. Yes. So you say this is labor-intensive. Yes. And I'm going to say to John and Bruce, we have so many groups at Fort Leonard Wood that want to come and help and volunteer and do jobs that this might be something that we could use some of them for. I know there's pictures that they're services. just winter pictures. Yes, because mm -hmm. I have not... Okay, I, I walk the trail with my dog almost five times a day. If well, I, I mean, when we cut it, is there a season? Oh, yes, best? there is, and I think it tells you that on okay. the pages there. I believe it says the winter time is the best time to cut it. Yeah, because it's not blooming. Right. And but I, that might be a good uh, project for us to get on, Lawrence. Lawrence, I'll throw you and Amanda in there, too. Yeah. But obviously, you'd have to work through John and Bruce. She, she already has some people that are willing to come out and, and start working on what they can. Well, I, right. I actually went down to the creek the other day by myself and I cut some off of some of the little sycamore trees and I jumped on one of the big sycamore trees. And you jumped on it? Yeah, I did. Go, Bonnie. I jumped on it with a saw <laughs> and nipper. I'm glad we didn't see you because you'd have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. I got permission. He would have pardoned you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go to the Yes, I got permission. But it was, I also had winter privet in it, which is another invasive species, and it had uh, Japanese honeysuckle in it, and a tuck with ivy in it, which I got. Is that yeah, one? so it's doable, and anyway. Can I tell you that we were very aware of the emerald ash borer? Yeah. I'm saying it wrong, but, uh, and have been working on that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, have taken down a couple of trees. Right, well that, that And it really caused a stir. When we took those trees down, I got several messages from I'm people sure and had to explain to them why they had to come down. And so we know that's a problem. And here's another one that we have a new park superintendent. I met him. Trey. Yeah. And uh, again, John and Bruce are the guys that will be right. moving with this, if, you know, whatever we do. Well, some of these trees are 37 inches in diameter that this has been. That's pretty big. That is very big. Those trees have been there since my mom was born. She's 92. And they're dying. They're going to die. And they are, some of them are in the process of dying now. And they'll have to come down too because of where they are. I have noticed the pictures you have of the tops coming off. I've noticed that in our park. Have you noticed that, Bruce? Yes. Yeah. So that, I just.
want to present that to you. I thank you. Well, I, I thank you. Okay. And and I, I think the whole council uh, thanks you. Thank because you. that's, again, how you get something done. And I would love to help with the volunteers. So, thank okay. You all. We got your number. We got your number, Bonnie. <laughs> yeah. but, but again, we appreciate that. And uh, again, that's how government's supposed to work. Thank you. Yeah. Lawrence? The park or oh, wait a minute. Any questions for oh. Mr. Wil Ms. Wilson? No. Yeah. I've done that with uh, the very high poison ivy, too. Okay. Vines and those wanted to be sure. Okay, Lawrence? Okay, park board met at 6 o'clock and adjourned at 719. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was good. You have an award. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I thought she'd like that, that. That's just one of my presents, too. Okay, Mary, thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. But uh, go ahead and make it short. I hope, yeah, I will. <laughs> And I really appreciate Bonnie totally. Uh, oh, yes. He brought it up, and I know Mr. Harrell and uh, Mr. Doyle are really happy also. And I'm sure they're going to dive into it, hopefully. And Trey already has a copy of that, so he's privy to it himself. Well, at least now we know. Yeah. You know, that's part of the issue right there. Go ahead. Agreed. Uh, we did have another guest, his name was, I'm going to go right into the uh, WSR, uh, Scott Bryan, and uh, he did uh, present a problem he's got, and we do have a problem with WSR, we're having trouble with sponsors, we're having trouble with uh, 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 kids joining, you know, everything's down, let's put it that way. I got many com um, many comments on the photography. And the photography is one of the things that I understand it's being worked on and looked at. So that, uh, that that's what Scott Ryan come up with. Cool. I'm focusing. I, I didn't mention. I didn't mention Mike because uh, I didn't know. I, I didn't. That's why I didn't mention. Him. So. Anyway. Uh, all that's down. I did go to the uh, um, school board meeting uh, Tuesday over at uh, Lakeway, and they're willing to work with the WSR and see if they can't do something. They're already working over there with the baseball team because we have the flood problem, so that messes up our soccer. And I actually came up with a solution. Uh, I actually know somebody that everybody here knows. His name is Councilman Wilson. He has an insight to have weather taken care of. He did it during uh, <laughs> uh, a pumpkin uh, fest. He took care I'll of I'll take care of the weather, yeah. Yeah, yeah the weather. So uh, I, I'm going to recruit him. I got it, Lawrence. Yeah. Sean, he drops names all the time. <laughs> right. right. And anyway, uh, uh, I'm trying to do that, plus I understand they're trying to get back on the post. Uh, that's my biggest worry is the WSR. As far as uh, Trey's report on the uh, uh, superintendent down there, they do have still a problem with the, uh, the bathroom, the jacks or, or that lift and, and bring it down. They're having troubles with the uh, gears in it. It took them almost a half a day to just to get it set up and it took normally but not supposed to take that one. So they're all looking into that also. You, you uh, mean the bathroom at the RV park? Yes, the RV park. Okay. Correct. Leveling jacks. Okay. Yeah. Leveling jacks, correct. That's right. Um, and one more thing, we have an event uh, on February 22nd, uh, God House Walkathon. And the only event we have other than on Saturday, February 29th, there's no excuse because everybody I talked to did not know it was a leap year. So nobody's got that day scheduled. Get over to <laughs> be, get over to BFW and get in on the Black Life uh, uh, bingo. Oh, bingo. And they have a chili dinner there and a 50-50 raffle. Get over there, fill those seats up. There's a couple hundred seats over there. There are a couple members here from BFW, uh, Councilman Liberty and myself. Okay. 
And uh, we way support the WSR and they'd be a sponsor. So. I would say two more dates that you, you probably need to get on your calendar would be the uh, May 16th is Kids in the Park Day, and April 7th is the American Legion Egg Hunt, which is always a big event for our city. Uh, hundreds of kids come out for that, so yeah, that, April 7th and that, May 16th. That all be brought up. Uh, but uh, please, please come out to the VFW on a day that doesn't exist. Questions for Lawrence, anybody? Yep. Lawrence, uh, you have an A-plus for the day. I first, right. first of all, you brought Bonnie in, and second of all, that was a short report, and it was to the point. And I wasn't done, so I just... <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. You, you've, got, you've, got the, you've got it in front of you. Just go ahead and read it. you got enough uh, yes. homework to do. Well, and we do have it in front of us, and, but I would like for you to hit the high points, and you did a good yeah. job of that. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, guys, go back a minute. The Fun Club. Would you believe the one I left out was the one that I talked to about all this? And it's Connie Trower. Connie Trower is part of that group, and there are five of those uh, girls that do that wonderful job. So my compliments to them. Planning and zoning, uh, Cecil is not here. Uh, Bruce, do you want to take that? I believe I was out of town. Uh, Mayor, this is about our uh, January meeting. Uh, I don't think it made the oh, okay. minutes at the last meeting. And uh, the, the actions appointed a new chairman, Janet Kreider had resigned, and Twilight Cordry was appointed as the new chairwoman. We also discussed the adoption of the 2018 ICC building codes, and I think John, Mitch, and Nathan discussed the codes and some of the uh, proposed changes, and the uh, Planning Commission approved those uh, uh, codes and recommended they be adopted, and we're in the process of doing a little more research and probably present those to the different committees and to the City Council in the future. I think we're getting a little more impact, uh, input from uh, developers and builders. So of course, we saw the, that on our goals for the year. Yes, that was a kind of a goal to research that and see if we could adopt a, 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 a code that would, would be good for our area. Any right. questions? Very good. Planning and zoning, anybody? Cecil, by the way, is out of uh, town, and so he could not be here tonight. Standing committees. Uh, Councilman France, start us off with roads and grounds. Okay, we met on February 6th. Call to order, no, uh, no uh, citizens' comments. Uh, major projects, uh, we've talked about them for the last couple of weeks. Uh, we have our paving uh, uh, down, what we're going to do when the park, or when the uh, uh, pavement uh, plant opens up. Park grant, Mr. Harrell stated that we have permission to proceed on our recreational trail. Uh, grant for the park, there's an issue with the location of the restroom. It was like seven or eight inches into the flowway versus the floodway. So it's kind of like uh, we got that corrected. So that's just a matter of getting the movement and building season. And uh, everybody is right now, we've got all kinds of projects going. So it'll get started and we'll have another bathroom down in the park as well as extending the trail up towards the downtown area. Uh, street Park, Brian Adams stated his department has worked several snow and ice events is, and a small flood in the past month. They've regraveled Pippin Road and cleaned up the park. Ron Adams suggested changing the budget to pave Pippin Road. The street department has done two utility cuts, put out new signs, clean ditches. There was a need for a closed session. Councilman Wilson made a motion to enter into closed session. Councilman Farnham seconded the motion. The motion passed, made the enter into closed at 4.47. We came out at 520. Chairman France asked for a motion to start building the solid waste building down inside the sewage treatment plant. Councilman Wilson made the motion. Councilman Farnham second. Motion passed. So we're starting to build. We're going to be building that also. And that will be done uh, hopefully uh, at a good savings cost with us doing a bunch of the work. Very good. And Bruce, could I talk about Pippin Road real quick? Sure. We usually haven't paved Pippin or Superior because of the flooding. Yeah, that goes under water, especially when you start getting down there. And I just, that was a surprise to me because we usually never talk about 
paving those two streets? I think we have, Mayor, I think we have a draft list of streets to pay. Mm -hmm. And it has not been officially approved, so any of those uh, things are subject to uh, discussion. I mean, I think there's some discussion on, uh, I think we're going to bring it back to the next meeting. If you kind of discuss that, we'll take that cons concern under, right. under, under advice. I just wonder if Pippin Road wouldn't have the uh, water rushing as much as Superior. Maybe that's what it is, uh, Pippin Road has a lot of water rushing. We'll take, we'll, we'll do a little bit of research on okay. that. It, it gets hard hit during some of the, uh, some of the uh, floods. It gets really hard hit. Right. So okay. we'll, we'll research a little bit more and we'll, we'll bring back a recommendation okay. to the committee. Very good. And Mike, uh, keep talking because you are our utility chairman and you have things going on. February 4th, called me in order. Uh, we did have Mr. Uh, Bruce Goodrich here uh, to add some uh, comments into our ordinance regulating the installation of propane service in the city. If you remember the big flood we had, we had propane tanks that were ripped out of the ground and floating down backyards and spraying gas. Remember it well. Uh, and so uh, with a few more recent uh, incidents, we've determined that we need to make some, uh, we need to make an ordinance that governs stuff like that in certain areas of the community and in regard to size of uh, maximum size of tanks within the geographical uh, area of the city. And so we, uh, we discussed that and we will be continuing to discuss that. At next month we had a few things that were of concern to committee members. Solid waste contract discussion. Mr. Harrell made the recommendation to move the ordinance, take the city council for approval that states the city of Waynesville will enter the business of commercial solid waste collection within the city limits of Waynesville, Missouri, uh, two years from the effective date of the notice. Uh, and I uh, made the recommendation to moving this item to closed session for further discussion. Project updates, the water tower in uh, Northern Heights is all in and it is functional, not yet. We're still, so we don't have the booster station. Oh, the booster pump's not in? No. Okay, the tower's in, and it's uh, looking good. And we did get a hydrant up there uh, for that neighborhood, so that will definitely help in fire protection instead of having to bring tanker trucks <coughs> all the way back in, like I saw them come to the high school wow. years ago, or the old middle school back down there to fill up and go back out. And so uh, that'll hopefully save some time. Industrial Park Sewer Extension, Mr. John Doyle stated the public works construction crews have installed about 250 feet of gravity sewer line. The industrial park in it is continuing. Fiber optic installation, the new jail. Uh, Mr. Earl stated the fiber optic installation is scheduled to be installed on February 17th. President's Day to I'm, possible road. Closure. I was wondering what they were doing down there. I, I drove by there that day, Bruce, and I thought, oh my goodness, they've got a water break. Mm -hmm. But I forgot that they were doing the fiber optic. Yeah. Uh, the next one is a great one for our citizens and our city. The SCADA, uh, we had budgeted 180 some odd thousand for this year. Uh, we got it for 73,000, uh, and it was such a good deal that uh, we've already jumped on it. Uh, wastewater grant study. Mr. Harrell stated that the staff have met with the engineers are in the process of gathering information for the study. Recycling grant. Mrs. Jones updated the committee about the current recycling grant that included handouts showing the timeline and brochure that will be handed out to our customers. So we did get the grant. We bought a bunch more uh, containers. We've got bins. So if your name is on the list for bins, Come in and get them. I don't know if y'all are calling. Are you calling at all? Or? Yes. We are. Okay. So we do have the recycling bins, and if you're interested in taking part in that, you can actually come and get one of our blue bins. Okay. Uh, in, in the park, if you look behind the old school that was torn down where they're putting in the jail, we have an electrical line that runs over where the kids play. That's <coughs> going to ultimately be moved underground. I like uh, that a lot. So we're going to get rid of overhead lines within the park. That's nice. Uh, right of way clearing budget adjustment. <laughs> Mr. Harrell presented the committee with a budget adjustment 
of 55,000 to 58,900 from BNN tree service and debris removal for right of way clearing within the city. Councilman Wilson made a motion to approve the budget adjustment. Councilman Connolly seconded, seconded, and all in favor. Uh, basically, uh, the reliability of our electrical service. It, one, it cuts down the ability of the squirrels. They can only jump so far. <laughs> and so uh, by cutting our right-of-ways and clearing them on a better, uh, we've cut down on the outages caused by squirrels. And we've also have worked very diligently to also eliminate branches that bring down our, our power lines. And we also, with, with uh, encouraged with the state, where they passed a law where if we had a big tree in a yard, that was capable of coming down over our lines, we could take them out also uh, to enhance and improve electrical reliability throughout the city. And so uh, this is our third year for being in tree service, uh, going through and clearing right of ways, because uh, it's just too labor intensive for our little electrical crew to take care of. And boy, and is it paid, it's paid no for itself. Work. It's paid for itself. It has. Uh, in conjunction with the other improvements we've done with reconductoring, uh, our reclosers. I mean, reclosers just last month uh, stopped 82 electrical out wow. outages in one month. I mean, just little things mm -hmm. that can cause problems. Uh, so we've, uh, we're have we really working hard, our electrical people uh, have. Uh, department updates. Gas department, Mr. York State Engine Department completed complete some visual and online testing, which is required by the Public Service Commission, finished up inventory and helped install sewer line in the industrial park. Water and wastewater department, Mr. Albert stated his department had 17 work orders, three meter repairs, three main repairs, four leaks on service line, four sewer work orders, and they jetted one line. Electric department, Mr. Sheldon stated his department, three power outages, 13 work orders, three street lights, one tree and six miscellaneous. 13 poles installed for feeder line C to D. Uh, that's what that basically is, is uh, we've cut the right of way and we've installed poles to conduct, to interconnect two major feeder lines that provide electric to the city. So now, instead of out of just taking out a whole area, we can back feed power from another portion of the city to that to where we can eliminate a lot of the, instead of the whole area being out, we can reduce that, the amount of outages uh, wherever it may occur by backfeeding power. And we've been doing this for the last couple of years also. Uh, a motion was made. Oh, I stated there was a necessity to go into closed session. Uh, and motion was made by Councilman Wilson to go into closed session. At 424, <coughs> seconded by Councilman Connolly. Motion carried 523. Uh, Councilman Connolly made a, made a motion to send the ordinance. Uh, this is after we came out at 523. Uh, Councilman Connolly made a motion to send an ordinance establishing a rate increase for trash service in the city to Waynes, uh, City of Waynesville to City Council for approval. Uh, so we'll have that to deal with. Councilman Wilson seconded, and all were in favor. Councilman Connolly made a motion to approve the proposed trash building location site and cost estimate. Councilman Wilson seconded, all were in favor. Councilman May Wilson made a motion to send an ordinance approving the city's of Waynesville assumption of commercial solid waste collection services pursuant to Missouri revised statutes to the city council for approval, and Councilman Connolly seconded, all were in favor. Having no further business, the meeting adjourned uh, by myself at 524. Next meeting, March 3rd, 3.30. Very good, Mike. Any questions? Now, Mike, even though you were full of great information, I give you a B plus. <laughs> I was only a C student, so that's, 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 good. Good. that's a step up, isn't it? Guys, we do have two ordinances connected with uh, uh, the things that Mike discussed. And I hope that the public uh, kind of noticed there that we are intending to begin solid waste management for the city. And no details to announce at this time, but we are uh, involved in that. 
And so we need two ordinances passed tonight. Our counselor is not here tonight. John is our counselor. <laughs> and he is going to get, uh, read ordinance 2398, which has to do with solid waste management. First reading of ordinance number 2398, an ordinance amending ordinance 767, Establishing rates for solid waste management and recycling services furnished by the city of Waynesville, fixing an effective date. You have to read it again. Second reading of ordinance number 2398, an ordinance amending ordinance 767, establishing rates for solid waste management and recycling services furnished by the city of Waynesville, fixing an effective date. Very good. And I know we're going to discuss this. But I would entertain a motion. Motion. Motion by Mike. Second. Second by uh, Jerry here. I heard first. And uh, discussion. And first of all, let's let Mr. Harrell uh, talk about this a little bit uh, to the public and tell the public what we're doing here. Okay, Mary, the, the team here, the staff that you see here, you know, we, we did evaluation of basically our trash services. Uh, I believe that we hadn't had a uh, rate increase um, in the trash area since, was it 1994? Oh, oh my gosh. So we make uh, 45 cents uh, basically on trash. When we did evaluation, we were actually going in the hole. By the time you pay your uh, your staff, your, your postage, you know, your costs, you have bad debt. You know, some people don't pay their bill. Of course, we always have to pay our bill. We saw that we were in the hole on the trash service. So we brought this information, of course, to the utility committee, presented the problem, and the utility came up with a solution to kind of phase in a rate increase over, over a period of several years. And so I believe it's about $3 over three years. Yes. And, and I think it will still be lower than a lot of people have outside, uh, right. outside the city limits, but it was uh, not really sustainable. Uh, for us to operate that service, basically what would be at a slight loss to the city. You know, basically the other utilities would have to pick up the slack to cover right. what we're uh, experiencing in the trash service. Well, I think just the simple fact you said we haven't had an increase since 1994. Yes. It is enough to explain that. Mm -hmm. And I would think for the public, I know for myself, we have said citizens in the audience tonight, uh, three dollars over three years, we probably won't even notice it. But the city will notice it as we begin to hopefully break even. Yes, so and I got to commend the staff, uh, uh, you know, John, Michelle, Tracy, you know, uh, Mitch and Mary, and you know, the whole crew here. Good job. Uh, did, a, did a good analysis based on, uh, you know, what we're, what we're experiencing with the crash. Good job, and sometimes we actually pay consultants to do that and pay them big bucks. You guys are going to get a Coke. <laughs> but we appreciate it. Great job. Uh, Mike, you have a comment or question? Well, yeah. One of the other reasons is, uh, like I've stated, we're taking over the trash. That means we're going to have to hire employees and we're going to have to have equipment, which all is going to cost. And so we've got to pay for that somehow. Uh, and this help, it helps us get ready for that. This helps us get there. And uh, so uh, it's just time. Anything else? Any other questions? The, uh, Ed? Thir the third date on, on the increase should be 2022. We have, yeah, probably. Yes, it should. It should be 2022. Patch. We'll correct that. Very good. Good eye, Ed. No, I'm working at it. You're going to need a glove. Any other questions? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? <clears throat> Councilman France? Yes. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Farm? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance passes. We also have ordinance 2399, which has to do with the fact that we do intend to begin a solid waste collection service in the city. I started to say Councilor. Assistant City Administrator, John. First reading of ordinance number 2399, an ordinance approving City of Waynesville's assumption of commercial solid waste collection services pursuant to Missouri Revised Statutes 260.247, fixing an effective date. 
Second reading of ordinance number 2399, an ordinance approving the City of Waynesville's assumption of commercial solid waste collection services pursuant to Missouri Revised Statutes 260.247, fixing an effective date. I'd entertain a motion. Motion. Second. And I heard motion here and a second from Clarence. I'll get you next time, Ed. Uh, Mike Curtis made the motion, Clarence the second, and questions and comments. Um, again, I would just tell the public that this is uh, legally something we have to do in order to get ready to begin a solid waste collection. And so it's really just uh, kind of paperwork. And Mayor, this is for commercial. Uh, pick, uh, right. Commercial. Sorry. We do not have to do this for residential, but for commercial. And I forgot that. Because residential, they're already our customers. Yes. Okay. Okay, everybody. Anything? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilman Farnham? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Fred? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance passes, and thank you, Mr. Harrell, for correcting me. Can we stop for just a moment? Because uh, you did not remind me, Michelle, you must, because I forget, <coughs> you must make a note. I did not ask for citizens' comments. Citizens comments yeah. She usually gives me the eye. I usually do, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the city council <laughs> besides Bonnie Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie already spoke. Okay, thank you. I needed to do that though because I forgot. We're moving along to finance and human resource, uh, human uh, resources, and that is Councilman Liberty. Finance and Human Resource Committee meeting, February 13, 2025 p.m. Councilman Jerry Brown was asked to sit in because of Councilman Davis and Councilman Curtis was unable to make the meeting. Meeting was called to order at 5 p.m., reviewed the bills, and we voted to, we approved to pay the bills. Monthly budget review, account status, Mr. Harrell reported to the committee that as of this date, we had over 3.7 million in city bank accounts with 2.7 million in restricted accounts. Mr. Harrell reported that as of the end of the year, we were 9% of our budget projections and expenses, and 10% our budget projections and revenue. There was a discussion of proposed ordinance about expired business licenses, and at the current, the penalty is a dollar a month. Uh, there's really no motivation for somebody to exactly. pay their their business license. Okay. So it was raised uh, to go on to council for ten dollars for each additional month. It's late after the first month. So that was approved to be forwarded to the full council. Annual review of budget balance reserve policy, Mr. Harrell stated, city fund balance reserve policy states maintain reserve city funds at or above 10 to 15 percent of normal operating budget for a three month period. He proposed a change in the wording to say maintain revenue in city funds at 10 to 15 percent of normal operating budget. And vote was called and it was approved to go before the council, full council. Personnel budget on medical marijuana. Mr. Harold provided the information to the committee, provided a memo that summarized possible Updates of the city personnel manual. Uh, assistant city administrator John Doyle stated he spoke with the insurance provider Murma, but they don't have any advice as of this time. Mr. Harrell recommended that it be continued to be researched. Discussion of transitional leave and. Then there was a 
need for closed session for legal personnel in real estate when in the closed session at 531, return to regular at 553. Next meeting will be held on March 12, 2020 at 5 p.m. Very good. I'm sorry if I heard. And I was out of town for that meeting also. Um, you talked about some interesting things there. Any questions for Clarence? Okay. I was I was a little surprised that Merma didn't have anything to say about medical marijuana with our employees. Mayor, I think it's so new that neither oh. MML or Merma have us adopted any uh, recommendations. Oh, okay. Yeah. Things so, are still in the research stage. Yeah. So we'll just kind of be watching MML and see what comes out. Very good. Thank you. And then um, we do have an ordinance that uh, involves those business licenses. Okay. And again, another example of things that really we just needed to update. Uh, I believe everybody would agree on that. This is, get ready, John. This is Ordinance 2400, and this has to do with business licenses. First reading of Ordinance Number 2400. An ordinance amending Chapter 605 regarding the issuance of business licenses fixing an effective date. Second reading of Ordinance Number 2400. An ordinance amending Chapter 605 regarding the issuance of business licenses fixing an effective date. Very good. I'd entertain a motion. Motion. Second. M motion. Second. Mike. I was trying to give I was trying to give this one to Ed. Motion, motion by Mike and uh, Clarence seconded it. Are there any questions or comments? Bill? Yeah, business license. Is it on their anniversary date or the first of the year or what? I think it's the first of the year, isn't it? First, uh, first of the year. Mm -hmm. yep. <coughs> Anything else? Well, I have a question on it. Okay, Ed. Uh, Sorry. Section 2 talks about the penalty of 90 days in jail, $500 fine if you're convicted. Uh, so that would mean the police would have to issue a ticket. But is there any time frame for that? Or would you do it the, the third month? I think we need it. Uh, it probably just follows state law, doesn't it? I think there's some discretion there of when the ticket would be written. Normally, we uh, talk to people and try to get them to voluntarily comply before we before we send out uh, before we ask the police to address well, it. I don't that understand way. that, but I think we need to have a, a timeline because you can't go down and, and send the police down after John Jones the first day of the of month that he visits and give his neighbor three months before you send the police. I think uh, normally we're going to try to work with people for two or three months before we uh, before we uh, turn now, over the place. There's no problem with that, Bruce, yeah. but I think we need to save three months um, or four months or whatever we're going to do. Has it ever come Some, to that? Uh, sometimes, sometimes situations vary uh, months. Uh, Sometimes situations vary. I hate to tie the police's hands uh, when we or when not they can go. Sometimes we, it's hard for us to catch somebody or something like that. I understand your issue. Bruce, I understand we, your issue. We discussed with our attorney that the, what options we might have to, to be helpful with our business people. But yes. yeah, I understand what Ed said. Yes, you know, I understand what Ed's call. coming. And we can, we can probably address that through a policy. Oh, okay. I think, I th Mr. Collins, if you don't mind, we can address that through a policy rather than an ordinance. Okay. And the policy could kind of, uh, uh, kind of address what kind of steps we'd like to take, and the procedures we'd want to go, to, we'd want to go to before we, before we went to that option. Yeah. And the chances of that happening are probably very, very high. But good question, Ed. Anything else, Madam Clerk? Would you call the roll? <coughs> Councilman France. Yes. Councilman Collins. Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance passes. And we have the police committee, Councilman Liberty. The By the way, I didn't grade you while ago, so I'm going to grade you after this one, okay? I didn't give you a grade. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Thank you.
Uh, meeting was called to order at 3.30. There was no citizen comment. We discussed focus on reduced detection while driving. Mr. Harrell stated that one of the major goals is to increase citizen safety. He presented the committee with information about the major reasons why we should not text and drive. There's an alarming uprising of deaths due to texting and driving. Mr. Harrell recommends for police officers to put forth effort in enforcing that law by giving warnings to try to reduce use of cell phones while driving, and the committee agreed. ATV usage, Mr. Harrell presented the committee with a sample ordinance for the, pertaining to the city street. He would like to give the committee a chance to look over and bring it back to the next meeting. Uh, Councilman France suggested there be some type of verbiage stating in order to obtain a permit, it is required that ATV have headlights, taillights, turn signals, brake lights, the same thing that automobiles have to have. <coughs> Signaling at traffic circle, Mr. Harrell stated, Mr. Muxlow drew up a sample ordinance that would slightly update our current city ordinance. It would add a section that states, no person shall exit the roundabout without first giving a signal in the statutory manner in the event that other vehicles may be affected by such movement. City Clerk Michelle Brown stated she would look for something more current, up-to-date, or new. Restriction in driving down the middle turn lane. Mr. Harrell presented proposed ordinance on the restriction. He stated the middle turn lane are not meant to be used for driving or passing. The ordinance is designed to explain what the middle lane is for. Chief Cordova suggested that where it states a vehicle shall not be driven in the lane for a distance of more than 500 feet, we reduce it to 100 feet. Councilman Connolly made a motion to make the change to send it before the full council and Councilman Brown seconded it, motion passed. Emergency pursuit. Uh, there needs to be a stricter policy, and that's Murma, our uh, insurance carrier, would like a stricter policy than what we currently have. Animal shelter update. Daniela Breedlove gave an updated animal shelter. She stated they took in a total of 408 dogs in 2019. And one of the things that I would like to make sure that everybody realizes is the adoption rate at our animal shelter is 96%. They're doing an excellent job up there. Police Department update. Chief Cordova gave an update on Homeland Security Sub Award. Police Department received the cover training. There was also another grant for two rapid ID systems. And Chief Corova stated Officer Brian Moore has returned to Waynesville Police Department. He has between six to seven half years of experience. There is a need for closed session. We went into closed session at 412, came back out at 429. Having no further business, the meeting was adjourned at 429. Next scheduled meeting will be March 5th at 3.30 p.m. Very good. And uh, any questions for Clarence? Clarence, you're getting a B. What? <laughs> you're getting a B because it was just a little word. <laughs> I won't do this. Hey, I won't do this next month, I promise. Uh, while we're talking about police and our chief is in the back, I wanted to say, I was gonna say this at the end, but I'm gonna say it now, that we are so proud of Vic Weir. And Detective uh, Weir retired, how many years, Chief? 
eight and a half years with us. Uh, Vic did not want any uh, hoo hoo hoopla, and so we abided by his wish. But tonight I want to say congratulations to Vic and his wife, and I hope they enjoy their retirement. And I, for one, am very proud of what Vic has done for our city. Okay, we have an ordinance. Let's see, we have an ordinance about driving your car down the turn lane. And I realize some people are going, you really have to have an ordinance about that? The answer is yes. You cannot believe the people that think that's a middle lane that you can drive in. And so we have an ordinance that's going to make that illegal. Do not be doing that. And in fact, the only time you get in that lane is if you're turning. Actually, okay, never mind. I do break that sometimes. <laughs> and, and I saw it today. I saw someone pull out of a business and set. C minus, you're getting along. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm the mayor. I pardon myself. <laughs> Pulls out and waits to get in the traffic. And I know you told me that's illegal. So I'm, I am guilty. I really am. I, I, do, I don't travel in it, but I do pull out in order to get in the traffic. My chief tells me that's illegal, so don't do that. But this ordinance has to do with driving your vehicle. And Assistant City Administrator Doyle, would you read Ordinance 2401? First reading of Ordinance Number 2401. An ordinance amending Chapter 315 of the Municipal Code of the City of Waynesville regarding vehicle turning movements, fixing an effective date. Second reading of ordinance number 2401, an ordinance amending chapter 315 of the Municipal Code of the City of Waynesville regarding vehicle turning movements, fixing an effective date. Very good. I'd entertain a motion. Motion. Motion by Ed Conley. Second by Sean Wilson. And is there any discussion? Ed? Yesterday evening, I was returning home. Uh oh. Uh, and I pulled it into the the center lane, the right turn signal along, make, make a left turn on Summit Street. Okay. Okay. There was, I was past the, the driveway to the church, so I was well within the 100 feet. Okay. There was no car <coughs> behind me in the turn lane, all the way to the light. I was almost hit by not one, but by two vehicles that were going to pull into the center lane at that point. Mm -hmm. To, to turn. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. As I mean, that's why engineers call it a suicide. Well, and that's why there's a break in the painting to show you where to go in. Yes, but yes. people don't. Yes, don't but they don't do it. That. Yeah. Okay. Any other thing? Anything else? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilman Farnham? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Craig? Yes. That ordinance passes, and now it is technically illegal to drive your car down the middle lane. And actually, if you pass your driver's test, it's in there. All right? Um, we usually don't have this much fun. Amanda, you're just really enjoying this tonight, aren't you? I am. But I, I have determined that we're going to have a good time uh, these next few months. And, uh, you know, even though I, look, I knocked the TV off. Okay. <laughs> Even though I cried at one point today, we laughed at other times. So uh, we have now the airport and, of course, several ordinances there. John, I'm going to grade you. Oh, Get ready. Uh, and Councilman Wilson. Oh, I thought that. Were you not there? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the airport board uh, took place on January 28th at uh, 3 p.m. Um, of course, there was a motion to pass to... Uh, Approve the minutes. I'm just going to hit the highlights here. Um, the budget was voted on. It was uh, it was completed and uh, received as uh, once the motion was passed. Um, right now, it is uh, a little over a hundred thousand uh, dollars, but it will be it will be a balanced budget once we receive our reimbursements back for grants. Uh, we have a Part 139 workshop, and we will be sending a representative. Um, to that training, if you want to know more about that, you can go to FAA.gov and, and look into the weeds of all of that uh, information about that certification. Um, employment numbers we're in, uh, a little over 5,500 um, for the year of 2019. 
Um, also, we had a 139 inspection um, in regard to our airport operations management, um, and everything went pretty well. Um, there were some terminal seats that was uh, that were erected, and uh, the city actually paid for it, and it's non-reimbursable non from the grant. What is the real quick? What is in just a word, word or two? What's 139? I've, I've that's the well, jet. It's the 139 is, is the, the workshop jet. certification for. The That's the FAA inspection of the airport. Since we've upgraded okay. the service there, now we fall under their inspection. Okay. So we have a yearly inspection by FAA. It's okay. called Part 139. Very I think good. that refers to the code that it's under. Right. I have forgotten. So. Okay. Um, as far as new business, um, the FAA, the FAA was uh, was pleased with the inspection and the attitude of our employees, so that's commendable for the employees down at the airport. Um, parallel taxiway, um, we have a supplemental agreement that was approved and uh, a motion was passed to um, grant that request. The passenger terminal expansion, we had a final inspection on January 15th of 2020 and uh, we do have a supplemental agreement approval request for that information as well, and that motion was passed. Uh, the SOP marketing report, there was a lot of great information as far as marketing is concerned. Um, just one of the highlights I think is, uh, is pertinent for us today is that there will be some updates to the website to reflect the new interline booking availability on Expedia. Um, and how that impacts the uh, check baggage. Good. Um, so that's some great information there. Um, also, we had a other business. The, the next meeting is going to be February 24, 25th at um, 2020, 3 p.m. in Waynesville here. Um, there was a need for a closed session. We went into closed session at 3.39. We came out of closed session at 3.49. And then it was a motion passed to adjourn at 349 from the meeting. And Very good. It was passed. Very good. Questions for Sean? And we do have some ordinance. Or yes. Yes. The uh, employment, the 5854, is that total going out and coming in or just in? Just in. Just in. Isn't the magic number that we've been wanting to hit for years is 10,000 for the cash truck? Well, there, there's two magic numbers now. One is 8,000 and one is 10,000. At 8,000, we get approximately 600,000 in grants. At uh, 10,000, we get $1 million in grants. So we're striving uh, uh, to reach those numbers. And uh, that's one of the goals of our marketing campaigns. Very hopeful, too, that if the, with the baggage agreement that that's yes. going to be helpful. Yes, a lot it's of now, it's, it is now a little bit this year. Of course, with the change for a new airline, there's sometimes a, a delay, and uh, now that they've got some airline agreements and some other things going, that we hope that that will pick up. And a lot of positive comments about our service out sure. there. I don't believe I've seen anything. Mary, I haven't seen anything bad uh, about the service. And so if you haven't given it a try, it, uh, I see some people in the audience shaking their head. It's wonderful. Uh, what a quick way to get to St. Louis. Uh, in fact, I'm going soon. I may think about doing that. Um, we do, do have, and for the public that's watching us tonight, we do have two quick ordinances to pass. And these have to do with the grants that we get concerning the airport. And so a lot of it is just bookkeeping. And so uh, we won't go into a lot of the detail on them. But they have to do with our projects that we're doing there. So this is proposed ordinance 2402. And it has to do with a block grant. John. First reading of ordinance number 2402, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2297 authorizing the mayor of the city of Waynesville to execute supplemental agreement number two for the state block grant agreement between the city of Waynesville, city of St. Robert, and the Missouri Highway and Transportation Committee fixing an effective date. Second reading of ordinance number 2402. An ordinance amending ordinance number 2297 authorizing the mayor of the city of Waynesville to execute supplemental agreement number two for the state block grant agreement between the city of Waynesville, city of St. Robert, and the Missouri Highway and Transportation Committee fixing an effective date. Very good. I'd entertain a motion. Motion by Sean. Second, Second by Ed. 
Any questions? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilman France? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance passes. We have ordinance 2403, mm. and this also has to do with, I get commercial, the, the terminal, the terminal. And John. First reading of ordinance number 2403, an ordinance amending ordinance number 2377, authorizing the mayor of the city of Waynesville to execute supplemental agreement number two for airport A, Agreement between the City of Waynesville, City of St. Robert, and the Missouri Highway and Transportation Committee, fixing an effective date. Second reading of Ordinance Number 2403, an ordinance amending Ordinance Number 2377, authorizing the Mayor of the City of Waynesville to execute Supplemental Agreement Number 2 for Airport Aid Agreement between the City of Waynesville, City of St. Robert, and the Missouri Highway and Transportation Committee, fixing an effective Very date. good. I'd entertain a motion. Motion. motion by Jerry. Second. Second by Mike Curtis. And questions or comments? And again, I believe this is on the terminal project. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Councilman France? Yes. Councilman Conley? Yes. Councilman Liberty? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Curtis? Yes. Councilman Wilson? Yes. Councilman Farnham? Yes. Thank you. That ordinance passes. And John, I'm going to give you a grade. Okay. You know, Ralph is an A. Plus. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, I'm going to give you an A. Really? Yes. Wow. Because you did a great job. Okay. Uh, my teacher uh, comment to you would be give it a little more emotion and act like you know it's really something that you're interested in. Get excited. <laughs> get, get excited. But you have an A. I couldn't give you an A plus because you know Ralph is the, yeah. is the, or, the counselor. Okay, and our last committee uh, meeting of the night is Councilman Farnham. Bill? Yep. We met on February 4th. Uh, we were running about 29 minutes late because huh? the committee in front of us kind of went a little bit too long. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, we had no citizens. Because comments. we have a lot of business <laughs> and we spend a lot of money. We discussed draft ordinances on the new building codes. Uh, Mr. Harold gave some updates. Then we went to the proposed state legislation concerning the Sunshine Law and some changes that's being enacted. Uh, we jumped to the economic development issue of business spotlights, which we have already seen tonight with uh, Lawson Woods Antique being newly nominated. And then Mr. Harrell also discussed with his upcoming events, uh, the Military Fishing Day in Jeff City's camps and due to weather. Have they rescheduled that for uh, I believe it's March 31st. Oh. I believe it's, uh, I'll have to confirm that, but I believe that's the date. Okay. Uh, the other events was mentioned earlier, God's uh, House Walkathon on February 22nd in the East Red Front, sponsored by the Uh We did do a little bit of business on uh, Christmas lights. I like that. that. Mm -hmm. uh, discussed updating the directorations and uh, researched and found rope lights for $27 a piece, which is a Good price. Uh, we had a meeting during the closed session, which we did at 542. We came out of closed session at 609 and we adjourned at 609. Very good. And I think the rope lights around the whole square are going to be dramatic. And so I thank you guys for that. Thank you for doing that. Uh, do we have any other business that needs to be discussed? I don't believe so. So uh, let's hear from Bruce, his city administrator report. First Mayor, again, I've given a written report, and of course a lot of things have already covered in the report. I do, do want to highlight a couple things. Um, uh, we um, reviewed uh, our, the performance of our community improvement district, and last year we had a record revenue, and it was 21% over its, the previous record in, uh, in um, 2016. That's so right. I think that's good, and I think it shows some growth growth in our sales tax revenue in the city. Uh, we've also, in addition to uh, uh, Sergeant um, Weir retiring, we also had Randy Brown retired, so we appreciate his service, and we promoted Trey to take his position, and Corporal Schaefer is on transitional leave as he's accepted a position with the Osage County Sheriff Department. Uh, as you mentioned before, we've got those recycling uh, Bins and we got a recycling grant. Appreciate the work of the staff on that. And uh, 
we have included a, um, a list of all the uh, major goals and projects and put it in your packet and we've reviewed all those major goals and, and projects with each committee as they come up. Also, uh, last but not least, I think uh, the um, Chili Cook-Off team, Tracy, Yay! can you throw those awards there? The Chili, the chili <laughs> chi Chicks and Bruce. And you win second place. Second place in uh, Judges' Choice, second place in Showmanship, and third place in People's Choice. And we had a great team, and Dr. Brown was there to help us, and the mayor and you, a lot of city council members were there too to have some good chili, so we appreciate your support. It was very, very good, and I appreciate you guys doing that. Actually, we sold out all the chili too. There wasn't a cup left in That's right. I, I really thought ours, ours was the best, and yes, you may quote me. I thought ours was the best. <laughs> Okay, we have council comments, and we'll start down here with Mike uh, Prince. It's cold outside. Stay warm. Check on your neighbors. Very good, Ed. There's a, I think there may be a scam going around. This morning, at exactly 1012, I got a phone call from myself. I'm sitting there on my phone looking at, at the caller ID, and it says, I'm the one calling. Uh -huh. Which is kind of interesting. Then it turns out the message was from Allison, who works for Microsoft, who wanted me to, to give her my numbers because my IP address had been hacked into somewhere in China. She says, I didn't really make the call. I don't think it was legitimate. So you get a call from me, you think? and it's from Allison of Microsoft. <laughs> I would suggest strongly that you not give them any information. And I would tell that you that not me. I was reading the other day. That's called cloning, where they come in and clone the numbers. And I was reading some stuff on that, and they are really getting on that. And hopefully they'll stop some of it. But isn't that a hoot? And I uh, do a terrible thing when they call me. I say, "Hang on, just a minute. I'll be right back." And then I just leave it there. Me too. And so pretty soon I pick it up, and guess what? They're gone. Okay. Always got a good story from Ed. Uh, Clarence. First off, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Harrell, uh, City Administrator, Assistant City Administrator, John Doyle, their staff, and the city employees for the excellent job they've been doing. They make us look good. You're here. And thank you to each one of you that came to this meeting. But especially, I commend Assistant City Administrator John Doyle for the excellent reading of the order. Here, here. He got an A. I would give you an A plus. <laughs> and, 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 I, I want to know what my grade was for the City Administrator. Report. Oh, you get A plus. All right. Oh, all yes. The time. You get A plus <laughs> actually, all the time. Actually, I okay. thought he deserved like a C because he didn't cover all the points in that But that's report. because we all had. <laughs> And that's why he got the A plus, right? And then Liberty's sucking up. <laughs> really Jerry. Since we're giving out grades tonight, I will give the city staff and the city manager an A plus. Here, here. The city council only an A. <laughs> <laughs> don't get us in trouble, Dr. Wow. Brown. <laughs> well, I hope I hope they don't give me a grade at the end. My you know, since I've served on city council, uh, infrastructure has improved immensely. And Mr. France was talking about, uh, uh, I don't know how it works, but I know at my own residence, the lights blink sometimes, but they don't go out as often. So whatever's being done is helping our community. Thank you to the utility people. Very good. John? <laughs> oh, Sean! <laughs> Um, don't shoot any armadillos. <laughs> uh oh, well, the chief left. Is this going to be a good story for me to hear? I'll just leave it there. Okay. Um, just make sure um, the city does have traps that's available <coughs> within the city limits for free. If you have problems with pests like that, you can actually come and sign out a trap and bring the trap back once it's empty. <laughs> And um, and then you, you're supposed to find a place to let it loose, and you shouldn't be within the city limits. Within the city? No. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, I can't wait to hear the story, Bill. I, I can't talk to that. <laughs> and I would say to you, camera people, you you kids on the, isn't this fun? 
<laughs> yeah. It's a lot more fun. This, look at all of them giving me the thumbs up. It's a lot more fun when we have fun, right, Mr. Wallace? Uh, just two things, and I'll talk fast. First one is Randy Brown. I wanted to say uh, publicly how much we appreciate Randy. Uh, we did give him a lunch uh, this past week, or maybe the week before. Uh, but Randy has left us uh, after 21 years with the city, and he has been such a good employee and has loved our parks and loved our kids, and uh, we're going to miss him. But I will tell you that I think he trained Trey uh, really well, and I, I think that we're going to expect great things from Trey. So my compliments to Randy. And then very quickly, I uh, did go on the SOP trip to San Antonio, and I went with uh, Mayor Lauritsen and Dorsey Newcomb and uh, Joe Driscoll and then the garrison commander, Colonel Towns. And yes, we did have fun. Yes, we did go out on the river walk. And so then I'll stop and say, thank you, citizens of Waynesville, for the opportunities that you have given me over the years. And this is just one of them. I attended the Association for Defense Communities, and I just wanted to tell you two things that I attended one, uh, every hour we were doing something. But two of them that I thought were really good for uh, our, our city is uh, the Chief of Staff uh, talked about priorities for the Army and for communities. And they, of course, are all the things that through SOP that we work on. Housing, education. In fact, he said education is always number one. We know that. Coming to the military, first thing you look at are the schools. And so that was number one. Child care availability. Uh, spouse employment, which we really are probably lacking a little bit in our area. And hopefully we're going to work on that. Uh, and then health care. And health care is something that we've worked on uh, in our community and trying to improve the opportunities that we have for uh, health care in our communities. For example, the medical clinic, uh, which offers aftercare care, and um, as, as well, of course, as Mercy. So those were issues. And then I went to one that was really a lot of fun to attend because it was called Rural and Isolated Bases. <laughs> And we, hit, we fit the rural part. We're definitely not isolated anymore, but we definitely are rural. And one of the things that came out of that is that so many soldiers come to Fort Leonard Wood maybe and they're not really happy at first, and then they get here and they love it. And mostly they love the fact that it's rural. And so the, the gist of this thing was keep the rural. You know, add opportunities, but keep the rural. And, you know, they say uh, in our area, especially, in fact, these things I wrote down, I'm saying to myself, we are so on it, through SOP especially, but the real issues in the future are going to be encroachment. We don't have any, you know, in our area. Uh, no diversification in the communities. That has always been a problem in our in our community, and we both communities have, uh, both cities have been working on trying to uh, change that. And then uh, a lot of money, army money, doesn't go to the rural areas; it goes more to the urban areas, and so that's a real issue for us. So I just was struck by the fact that uh, when they did say this, a brac is coming, and even though you hear, oh, they're not going to do a brac, uh, the uh, Colonel, who was giving this presentation, said, yes, there will be. There will be a BRAC. And that focus will be on partnerships, we're A+. Plus. Schools, we're A+. Plus. Spousal work, probably a C. Health care, I would say we're a B. Well, we're all about grades tonight, aren't we? But that's kind of how I looked at it as they were talking about it. And again, I enjoyed that. And I will remind you that I, we really went to San Antonio this year uh, to support Joe Driscoll, our old friend here who was part, actually started SOP, was one of the founding people. We went to support him because he became the new president of the Association for Defense Communities. And I will tell you, he did a marvelous job. We're so proud of Joe and uh, wish, him, wish him well. So again, I thank the citizens for that. And we have had a wonderful meeting. 
Uh, is anybody going to give me a grade? Uh, the mayor of the staff gives you an A+. Woo! 